Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbi Shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlu luqdatan min lisani yafkahu qawli Amma ba'id fakar qala Allahu azza wa jalla fi kitabihi al-hakim Wa huwa asdaqu al-sadiqin Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Wa lillahi al-asma'u al-husna fad'uhu biha Amanna billah sadaqallahu al-aliy al-azim Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh I begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala There is no doubt that it's due to His kindness and generosity Opportunities such as these are presented for us Where we gather together in remembrance of Him tabaraka wa ta'ala We continue with our discussion regarding the Asma Allah and we reached the name today of Al Amin. Al Amin. This is a name that comes from the root word Amana. For Aman, as we know, is to feel safe. So Amin is somebody who would make you feel safe, somebody trustworthy. And I'm sure many of us know people who are named Amin. So we we already know what this name is. And as we know, this is one of the titles which is given to um, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam. As he was known before even Mabath um, as a Sadiqul Amin, as the truth, as a person who speaks the truth and a person who is trustworthy. And in fact, these were titles given to him by the people, and this was one of the, the biggest hujja against the people. You know, when the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him and his family, brought the message of Islam, they already knew he was a trustworthy human being. They already knew he wouldn't lie. So yet when they rejected his message, this was a hujja against them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you were the ones who called him Sadiq and Ameen. Now, when we look at this name for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, often it is translated in many different ways. It is translated sometimes as the, Allah is the reliable, or Allah is upright, or He is trustworthy. But these are mere translations, and we don't get the true gist of that name just by looking at a translation. So when we look at this name in detail, it will give us a better understanding of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al Amin. Now, to understand this name Al Amin, we need to look at it from two different angles or two different perspectives. The first perspective is to look at it um, coming, you can say, from bottom to up, and then the next way we will look at it is top to bottom. So the way that we are going to look at this first is by the name Al Mu'taman. Yeah, Al Mu'taman. Its root is Aman, the same way. In Arabic, you know, if, to make life easier for those who are wanting to learn Arabic. No matter what word you take, if it's a six letter word, a five, most likely it will be broken down into a three letter word. Yeah? Uh, Mukatib, sounds like a big word. The root word is kataba. Yeah? So you know it has something to do with writing. Yeah? In the same way, mu'taman, the root word is amana. So you know it has something to do with aman. It has something to do with trustworthiness, safety. So here, mu'taman, with her fatha on top of the meme, in the end, mu'taman. It means that human beings entrust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is mu'taman. That I entrust everything that I have to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, in Arabic again, it makes a big deal. It makes a big deal when um, a fatha on a word or a kasra on a word or a dhamma on a word. You see, oftentimes we recite dua. We don't know what we are reciting first of all. And then if we miss a fatah dhamma, we say, Ah, Allah kareem, Allah will accept. But in actual, in reality, it could change the entire meaning of what we are reciting. I remember once I was in a gathering and they were reciting Dua'i Kumail. As we know, Dua'i Kumail is one of the most beautiful du'as that we have. And the person reciting said, Allahumma gfir li adhnuba allati adhnabtaha. Instead of saying adhnabtuhu. Now you see, all he did was change a fatha to a dhamma. 
Yeah? That was a change of Dhamma to a Fatha. And what he ended up doing was saying, Oh Allah, forgive those sins that you have committed. By changing a Dhamma to a Fatha. For us, it's no big deal. Ah, Dhamma Fatha, what's the big deal? Yeah, Allah knows. Yeah? But we have just committed kufr. Yeah, we have just committed, uh, we have called Allah as a sinner by just changing a dhamma to a fatha. So we need to pay attention to the way we recite du'as. And that is why we are often told that don't recite the Qur'an by heart, even though you know the Qur'an. Pick up the Qur'an. This is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make sure that you are reading it correctly. And the same applies to our du'as and anything that we recite. Unless we know it, we for sure know it like the back of our hands, even then to open up a book and read it. Now we all have smartphones, so we all can just scroll and find any dua that we are looking for. We don't need to have a book and this can be easily accessible. So when we come back again to the word Al-Mu'taman with a fatha on the meme, it means that he is reliable. I trust him with everything. It is like you can say he is my safe deposit box. Yeah? When we go to a bank and have a safe deposit box, we put our valuables in there. When I, what is, whatever I find valuable, I leave it in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Knowing that He is the most reliable and trustworthy person I know, and that He will take care of me. This requires a leap of faith on our part, to know that He will take care of me. Now, we have to be smart about it. Yes? There's a famous story of a man who came to the mosque of Medina. Now he had a camel and he was waiting to go inside the mosque so he was trying to understand what he should do with that camel. So he looked at the Prophet, may peace and blessings be upon him and his family and he said, Ya Rasulullah, I have this camel. I want to go say my salah. Should I leave the camel? Yes? And trust Allah will look after it? Or should I tie the camel and then trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look after it? There's a difference, isn't there? Yeah? It would be silly for me to sit at home and say, Ah, the risk will come. Allah will, Allah is kareem. Or I go out and I make efforts and then I know that the rest is up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet said, No, tie the camel and then trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take care of it. We need to take the first steps towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then we will see life will become much easier. But if we do not, are not willing to move towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then what can we expect from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So here, what we say that He is Al-Mu'taman, I leave everything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, a good way for us to begin to do this in the habit is, for example, when I leave in the morning to go to work and I leave my family at home, as I am leaving, maybe it would be a good habit to say, Ya Allah, I leave my family and my property in your amanat. Yeah? Because you are the most trustworthy person or the most reliable entity that we know. So these are simple things that we can do to show our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the name Al-Mu'taman, yeah? with a fatha on the meme. So and this is an understanding of the word Ameen. Now another way we can look at this is by looking at the word Al-Mu'tamin. A kasra with the meme. Yes? Al-Mu'tamin means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing the trusting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is entrusting us, the human beings, with all that He finds valuable. Yeah? What does Allah trust upon us? He trusts His religion upon us. Yeah? He trusts the message upon us. He trusts his halal and haram that we will carry out this halal and haram. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now is entrusting us with the amanat of his. Yeah? You see how there's a difference in the understanding? One, I'm doing the entrusting. Second, he's doing the entrusting. All together it forms the name of Al-Ameen. This responsibility that we have that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed upon our shoulders was a responsibility that everybody else rejected. But human beings were the only one who are able to uplift this responsibility. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ahzab, in a very beautiful verse, He says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Inna aradna al amanata ala samawati wal arud, wal arud, wal jibal. فَأَبَيْنَا أَنْ يَحْمِلْنَهَا SubhanAllah He says, it is we who offered the trust, amana. 
We gave the trust of everything to the heavens and to the earth and to the mountains. But they could not handle that responsibility. Hmm? They could not handle that responsibility. فَأَشْفَقْنَا minha. Huh? They were fearful of it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. They ran away from it. وَحَمَلَهَا insan. But it was only human beings who could bear this responsibility. Yeah? So we have been given the greatest responsibility by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything has a responsibility. The sun is responsible for coming out and shining so that people can benefit from it. Yeah? The waves of the ocean have a responsibility to carry forward the, the cargo and the ships. Yeah? The human beings have that responsibility to carry out the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a responsibility that nobody could handle except for human beings. And this is a very big responsibility that is placed upon us. To know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants this as halal, that means I must act upon it. It doesn't matter what I think it is. Yeah? It is not my say so what I think it is. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said it is halal, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said it is haram, I leave it. Even though I think it is good for me. Hmm? Even though I think that I know better, for example. It is not the case. Allah has entrusted with us for us to simply act it out. And this is looking at it just from the point of divinity. If we look at the importance of amanat, of trust between fellow human beings, we see that Islam has placed nearly all of faith upon the trust that one of us has with another. The fact that I can trust you and you can trust me is the cornerstone of religion. Yeah? You know when we greet a fellow brother, what do we say? Or a fellow sister, what do we say? Assalamu alaikum. You know how powerful of a word assalamu alaikum is? That peace be upon you. You know when you say salam to me, the meaning that I should get from that is that I feel safe around you. Yeah? That you will not do anything to violate me. Yeah? But subhanallah, yeah, when we say salam to another, what is in the back of our mind? Ah, ahamnaj kai bolse. Right now he'll say something. Right now he'll do something. We have these mistrusts in our heart because we have not understood the importance of amanat with one another. If you were to give me something, I have to guard that with my life. That is why we see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala. When he was doing the hijrah, when he was going from Makkah to Medina, what was the first thing he made sure happened? The amanas were returned to every single person. Yeah? This was a job he knew that he can only entrust Ali ibn Abi Talib salam with. Because he was another person who understood the value of amanas. When somebody gives me something, I guard that with my life. You know, there's a very lovely tradition that comes from our fourth Imam, Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam. Muhammad. Where he says, وَلَوْ أَنَّ قَاتِلَ عَلِي بْنَ أَبِي طَالِبْ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ اِعْتَمَنَنِي عَلَىٰ أَمَانَةٍ لَأَدَّيْتُ عَلَهُ Subhanallah. He says, if the killer of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam would give me an amanat, I would guard that amanat with my life, he says. Huh? This is our grandson of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Saying if the killer was to do that, imagine. Imagine the, the importance of maintaining the trusts between human beings. And that is why in a letter that was written by our 8th Imam, Imam Rada alayhi salam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, to Ma'amun, he says, Al-Iman huwa ada'atul amana wa ijtanabil kabair. He looks, he writes to a letter to Ma'amun and he says, Ma'amun, know that Iman, faith, is made up of two things. Ada'ul amana to return the trusts which were given to you. Yeah? Half of faith is to return the trust which was given to you. The other half is to avoid all the sins, all the big sins. Now, what does it mean the trust that was handed to us? Again, if we take a look at it and we look at it from the way we've discussed it, from the point of divinity and the point of human relations, we can understand then the importance of amanat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has entrusted amana upon us. We return that amana to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Human beings entrust amana upon me. I return that amana to human beings. And when I can make and strengthen my relationships with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with human beings, I have completed half my religion, says the Imam. So this is the importance. Now when we look at this even further, 
There is no doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has entrusted us with a very heavy responsibility. But on the grander scale of things, we understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have entrusted the Ahlul Bayt alayhim wasalam with even a greater responsibility. Yeah? Who can deny that? Nobody can deny that. And that is why when we read the du'as, they are known as Umana ur Rahman. The trustworthy or the reliable ones of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In dua iftita right now, we say, Umana'u fi ardihi. That we are addressing the Ahlul Bayt, that it is you who are the trustworthy ones that Allah has appointed upon His earth. And that is why even when we recite the ziyarats, for example, of Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salam, what do we say? Assalamu alayka ya Amin Allah. They are the ones who have been assigned responsibility far greater than the responsibility that we have been assigned. Yeah? For us, the responsibility is huge, but imagine the responsibility that they must have. So it is our job here to understand then that the responsibility matches the maqam that they have. For anybody who has given status or responsibility, you know that they have been held accountable that much more by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why sometimes it's good to be quiet and not known, so the responsibility is less. But the more we want to be out there, the more responsibility will be added upon us by people, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the more accountable we will be. So what were they entrusted with? They were entrusted with the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? That he did not find me worthy of handling the Sharia, but he found Ahlul Bayt worthy of handling the Sharia. He did not find anybody else worthy of this, but he found them worthy. He, they are also the ones who handled the, the secrets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This, this were entrusted to them. So we have to ask ourselves a question. Um, and this should be a natural question. How come I was not selected? Yeah? How come I was not selected with this responsibility? Um, naturally the answer is, is very simple, you know, if I um, have to move this member, for example, yeah, I have to move it to my car, will I get young children who are weak to move this or will I get adults who, have big, who are strong people who will be able to carry this? You give responsibility to those who can handle responsibility. Yeah? I may not have been able to handle this responsibility of the Sharia, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam have that himma to handle this Sharia. And that is why they were appointed. And that is why they were given this responsibility. There is nothing to do with us feeling bad. We should be honored that we were not given this. We should be thankful that we were not given this responsibility because he knew we would not be able to handle it. But the Ahlul Bayt are therefore in a higher status than us. That is why we look up to the Ahlul Bayt alayhim And that is why we wish that we can be placed with them. We always say in dua, Allahumma ja'alna ma'ahum fi dunya wal akhirah. Allah place us with them in this life and in the next life. Now, what becomes our responsibility with this name? We have understood this name of Allah completely, yes? Again, as a quick recap, it means that I find him trustworthy, he finds us trustworthy. And this is how the name Al-Ameen comes about. What is my responsibility with this name? First and foremost, I need to guard and protect the responsibility which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed upon me. Yeah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed upon us the greatest, greatest responsibility and that is the responsibility of the love of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. This wilaya is hands down the greatest gift that we could receive for it is only through wilaya that we will find salvation. If it were not for this, we would have not been guided and that is why we always thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about this. So we need to guard that. How do we guard that? By fulfilling our duties to our imam. By waiting and anticipating, active anticipation for the coming of our Imam. And inshallah, when the time is right, we can discuss what it means to actively anticipate um, the coming of our Imam. But this is one of the responsibilities that I have. Other responsibilities that I have is I need to make sure I fulfill my Salah. I fulfill my Siyam. I fulfill my Hajj. I fulfill my Khums. I fulfill all of these wajibats because they have been entrusted to me by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The least I can do is fulfill this trust of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? Who am I not to fulfill this trust? And more and as importantly, I cannot betray my trust to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, 
يا ايها الذين امنوا لا تخونوا الله والرسول وتخونوا اماناتكم وانتم تعلمون he says do not betray your trust o you who believe do not betray your trust with allah and the prophet by not fulfilling what that which has been entrusted allah has ordered us in the quran to make sure that we do this so if in these nights if we can have a moment of self reflection and understand fully what has been entrusted to me by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it will then make it clearer for me what i need to do to fulfill that trust of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the month in which we seek to improve ourselves my brothers and sisters we need to have moments of self reflection we need to have moments of understanding all that has been given to me and provided to me and how i can do my best to fulfill this amanat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me Lastly I want to end with something else that we can do and that is to pray for our believing brothers and sisters who are going through difficulty you know we live a very cushy life yeah we may face hardships but not the type of hardships that our muslim brothers face in different parts of the world yesterday we highlighted sham today i want to highlight um very quickly for 2 minutes what is happening in burma I'm sure many of you have heard in the news it has only come in the mainstream media recently but for the past 4 to 5 weeks there has been a massacre that has been taking place in Burma and our muslim brothers and sisters have been getting killed and nobody has talked about it and there is a reason nobody has talked about it until last year Burma was a military state that means the united states and all western countries had sanctions against them supposedly they became a democracy overnight Now the western powers want to open doors of relations with them and therefore they are overlooking this massacre just so that they can begin their economic ties with these countries otherwise for sure if this had happened last year you would have heard all about it but nobody is talking about it now and that's one and second is because muslims are being killed hmm? nobody cares nobody calls the buddhists who are doing these acts as buddhist terrorists you'll never see that happening but if god forbid if it was muslims they would have called it muslim terrorists go and study this go go home and just type burma muslim yeah and you will see articles and videos to see the type of um grief and tragedy that our muslim brothers are living in and the type of conditions that they are living in and it will break our hearts and i think inshallah it will make us feel more thankful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our condition and it will inspire us to pray for them as right now that only thing that the weapon that we have my brothers and sisters is the dua and the and this seeking the closeness to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa akhiru da'wan ana alhamdulillah rabbil alamin رحم الله من قرأ سورة المباركة الفاتحة